Hey guys, Alex here, AG Automotive, and here today we've got the 2024 Audi Q2. So let's check it out. Before we get into the video, just want to do a shout out to Audi Alto Central Coast, who were nice enough to let me have a look at this today, and I'll leave their contact details down below. And if you are after a Q2 or any of the Audi range, go and see them and let them know that Alex from AG Automotive sent you, and they will look after you. So at the front here, you've got the four rings, you've got a big black grille, you've got a nice trim piece that surrounds the black grille there. You've got your parking sensors you can see at the front there, and you've got your daytime running lights and LED headlights there as well. And I think the front bumper, he sort of has some sportiness to it. I like the silver trim pieces around, it sort of breaks up the front end. So what are your thoughts on the Q2? Have you got one of these? Have you got another model in the Q2 range? Let me know in the comments. So the wheels on the Q2 are 18 inch wheels and they're silver trimmed and they sort of have like a fan blade design. Again, I think it suits the Q2 really nice and you can see it's got the black trim over the wheel arches there. And the black trim continues all down the side. Now you do have the sunroof and moonroof there, which we'll have a look at when we jump in. So at the back here, you've got the Audi badge, you've got the Q2 badge, you've got your parking sensors, and then further down, you do have a bit of silver and gray trim there, sort of breaks it up and finishes it off. All right, let's go and have a look inside. So inside the Q2. Now, first impressions is, you know what? It's quite nice in here. Now, being the Q2, it's one of Audi's entry level models. And don't let that deceive you because they've actually made an effort to make it reasonably premium and nice inside. You've got nice leather seats there. You've got things like this nice trim piece along the center of the dash, sort of breaks up the gray. You've even got soft, touch dash and the door trim's a little on the harder side I will say but even just how they trim the door trims and things like that they've gone to that extent to sort of give it that more premium look over its rivals. So to the right of the steering wheel you've got your headlight controls there auto headlights or you can manually adjust them you've also got your fog lights and you've also got your dash illumination there as well. Steering wheel Really nice to hold, full leather. I love the silver trim. All the Audis seem to have this. I think it's quite nice. On the left there, you do have some menu controls for the dash there, and on the right, you do have some controls for your audio and telephone there as well. Behind there, you've got your indicator stalk on the left and your wiper stalk on the right, and the wipers are auto along with the lights. Further down on the left, you have your cruise control stalk there and on the dash you've got analog speedo and taco along with a digital speedo there in the middle you've got a few things like date and time fuel consumption things like that down the bottom you have your trip computers and you've also got your fuel gauge and your temperature gauge there up the top you've got distance till empty what audio you're listening to if your phone's connected for notifications and the mapping screen now I love Audi's mapping screen. It's second to none, really, really nice. So currently we've got the mapping in the middle there, but if I hit the view button, you can see it goes full screen. And again, you can scroll in, scroll out, and it's pretty smooth on there. And we'll come over to the media screen. Now this is Audi's older media system. And even though it is a little bit dated compared to the new ones, it still works a treat. Now you've got things like some car settings there. You've got some sound settings. You've got your radio stations, FM, AM, and digital radio stations there. You got media from a Bluetooth device or a USB. You've got your telephone there, Bluetooth, or you've got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You've also got your navigation, and I'll just show you that now. And again, like on the dashboard there you can scroll in and out it's very smooth 
And you know what? It does not a bad job, even though it probably is a little bit dated. Now, things like your Audi Connect, your smartphone interface, and you've got a whole bunch of settings there as well. Further down, you do have a few shortcut buttons there, things like your auto start, stop, your parking sensors, hazard lights, traction control, and you can turn the screen off should you wish. Further below that, you've got your dual zone climate control with seat heating option, and the seat heating is oof, second to none, especially on winter's day like today. Now, further down from there, you do have a 12 volt plug and a USB outlet along with a little bit of storage. You've got twin cup holders there. Further back, you've got your engine start stop and then on the left over there, you do have an audio controller, which is your volume and you can turn it on and off and you can go up and down tracks with that as well. As you know, I'm a bit partial to these volume knobs there. Further behind there, the gear selector, PRND and then S and then you've got manual mode as well, which, um, Again, very simple, very basic, and I'll just pop it into reverse. And you can see, you know what, reverse is pretty clear actually. So, um, and you've got your parking sensors there. So further behind there, you have a couple of shortcut buttons there, radio, media, nav, map, and your telephone. And then you've got this big dial here, big circular dial, and that controls the media screen there as well. And then you've got a couple of buttons behind there, menu and back, and you've got your handbrake there as well. And the armrest, reasonably soft. And if we open that up, you do have a USB and actually an auxiliary, which is not in many, you don't see in many cars now. And you've got a wireless phone charger. Now I will say that's good, but it does take away the storage space for the vehicle. So I think they could have incorporated it into a different spot. But in saying that, at least your phone is out of the way and you don't need to touch it. And the seats, full leather, really nice and comfortable to sit on. You've got some nice black stitching there that goes most of the way up the seat there. Again, just a nice place to be. And the glove box. You know what, it's quite spacious. You get your books in there along with a couple of iPads. And something you probably didn't realize is that there actually is a CD player just in there as well, along with a two SD card slots and a SIM card slot as well. So um, the Q2 is full of cool features, there you go. And the sunroof, we'll just open that up. And it's a one touch operation. And again, really nice for these Australian conditions and a one touch close as well. And you can just tilt it if you wish. All right guys, let's go and have a look in the back. So in the back of the Q2. Now first impressions is it's a bit snug in the back for me. Now I'm six foot one, 185 centimeters. If you have a look, I've got a bit of headroom, which is great. Knee room's not very good as my knees are hard up against the chair. Same with the leg room, isn't the greatest and foot room is okay and this seat is set up in my driving position. So you do get two ISO fix spots, two there and two behind me. And unfortunately in the Q2, you don't get a um, middle armrest or middle seat armrest, which is a shame. You do have a get some door pockets, which we'll have to do. So for the rear passengers, you do get two USB slots and you also get a map pocket on either side, which is good. All right, let's go and have a look in the boot. So in the boot of the Q2, so here we have 405 litres of boot room, which I think is pretty spacious. You've got your tether points up the front there. You've got some tie downs on the corners. You do have a little bit of storage space here on the left. There's currently a first aid kit sitting in there. And if I lift up the floor, you can see that you do get your breakdown tools and you get your tyre repair gel there, but there is a space for a spare wheel. So I think that's a good idea should you buy a Q2. All right, let's go and have a look under the bonnet. So under the bonnet of the Q2. So here we have a 1.5 litre four cylinder turbocharged petrol engine, and it produces 110 kilowatts of power and 250 Newton meters of torque. 
and that's mated to a seven speed dual clutch S-Tronic automatic driving the front wheels. Now Audi claims the Q2 uses 5.2 litres per 100 kilometres, which I think is really, really good. All right, let's go for a drive. All right, let's go for a drive in the Q2, so let's go. So vision at the front is really good straight ahead and towards the passenger side. Rear vision is quite wide and reasonably deep. Vision out the sides, you know what? It's good vision all the way out the sides. And their mirrors, you know what? A little on the smaller side, but they're not too bad. So I've just picked a bumpier stretch of road. We're just gonna test the Q2 out on it. You know what? Very impressed actually. It's soaking up all the bumps really, really well. Steering wise, you know what? Nice and easy. So what's the acceleration like from the Q2? Well, let's pop it in sport mode and find out. Wow, as soon as it gets on boost, it just wants to go. Now, initial, initially, when you really want to take off, it did have a little bit of wheel spin there, but once it gets on boost, wow, it actually does take off for a little car. Yeah, I'm very impressed, guys. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. All right, thanks, guys.